Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a puzzle with numbers. So we have positive integers that are arranged in a triangular pattern as shown. And we're going to be finding the sum of the numbers in the nth row. Of course, our answer is going to be in terms of n. Great. So we have the positive integer starting with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on and so forth. And obviously there's going to be you know, at least n rows, and we want to find the sum of the numbers in the nth row. So to understand how this problem works, let's go ahead and take a look at some particular rows, maybe the third one, and then try to understand the pattern because it's important if you can't solve a problem directly, which is sometimes hard, then you need to look at a simpler version of that problem. So in this case, I'm going to focus on 4, 5, and 6, which is the third row for our triangular pattern. And the sum of these three numbers would be 4 plus 5 plus 6, which is 15. Now, you can also look at the sum of these numbers from an arithmetic series perspective and just say, okay, there are three numbers and the number in the middle is 5 and I'm just going to multiply it by 3, which is the number of terms or the, you know, whatever the add-ons, whatever it's called, right? But the problem with that approach is, depending on whether n is odd or even, you may not have a number in the middle. In either case, you can still find the number in the middle, assume there's a number in the middle, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and think of it this way. Maybe we're going to focus on the last number in the row and the first number in the row, and that way we can kind of figure out what numbers we're going to add. Because one of the easy things about this problem is we're adding consecutive integers so summation would be fairly easy once we know the first number and the last number and the strategy is as follows to find the first number in a particular row we can look at the previous row and focus on the last number for example in this case the previous row is the second row and the last number is three so one more than that is going to give us our first number in the next row make sense so that's the approach we're going to follow, and let's see how this works, okay? Now, let's go ahead and figure out where we can get these numbers. First of all, why is 6 the last number in the third row? Let's think about it. Notice that we have one number in the first row, two numbers in the second row, and the three numbers in the third row. So every row has the number of terms, that is the number for that row. Makes sense? I don't know if that makes sense, but it's kind of confusing. So, four, so third row has three numbers, fourth row has four numbers, and nth row will have n numbers. So that's the first observation, which is super important. Nth row has n numbers. Now knowing the number of numbers in a particular row is good because if you can find the last number, finding the first number fa would be fairly easy. For example, if I know that uh, six is the last number, or the third number in the third row, to find the first number, I can subtract 3 and then add 1. Why am I adding 1? Because subtracting 3 would take me to the previous row, the last number, which is 3, and then I just have to add 1 from Gauss summation rule or whatever. Make sense? Okay, cool. Let's see how this plays out. So nth row has n numbers, so what is the last number? Okay, that's our main focus. The last number on the third row is 6 because 6 is 1 plus 2 plus 3. So you basically get the last number by adding all numbers 1 through n. So for the nth row, this is for the third row. For the nth row, the last number is going to be, let's just call that last number, is 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 all the way up to n. Okay? So what is that sum? It's n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Awesome. That's our last number you can call L, and the first number you can call F in that row. How do you find the first number? Again, there's a couple of ways to approach it. Go back one row, and what is the n minus first row, or you, you want to say n minus one-th row, whatever you, you prefer. But the last number is just going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3, and then it's going to be all the way up to n minus 1. Because remember, that's the previous row. And this is n minus 1 times n divided by 2, or n times n minus 1 divided by 2. But that's the last number in a previous row, 
and the first number in the nth row is just going to be one more than this number. Make sense? So to find the first number in the nth row, we're going to have to add one to this number, which is the last number in the previous row. So this plus one. And if you simplify this, it's just going to be n squared minus n over 2 plus 1. And we can kind of simplify it as n squared minus 1, n plus 2 all over 2. Okay? So, I don't know why that's happening, but sometimes notability, crazy things happen. And anyways, this is our first number in the nth row. And our last number is n squared times n divided by 2. Let's go ahead and write that too. So obviously, the second number should be larger, and we can kind of test it out. For example, if n is equal to 3, we're going to get 9 plus 3 divided by 2, which is 6. And for the, last, uh, for the first number, we're going to get 9 minus 3 plus 2 divided by 2. And that's going to be 8 divided by 2, which is 4. And that's actually correct, because 4 is really the first number. This is just a quick check. It is not a proof, but we already got the answer in terms of n, so we should be good to go. So these are my first and last numbers. The next thing I need to do is to find their sum, right? So here's how, how I need to, uh, here's what I need to do. This is my first number, n squared minus n, I think that was a 2, right? Plus 2 divided by 2, plus one more than that number, all the way up to n squared plus n divided by 2. So here's the million dollar question. How do you add these numbers in terms of n, right? That's a good question, and we can kind of think of it this way. Instead of focusing on the first number, I know I found the first number, so that's, I'm kind of guilty about that, but, you know, it will be better if we can think of it this way. Find the sum of all the rows, including the nth row, so it's going to look like this, 1, 2, 3, right? And then we're just assuming n is greater than 3. And then the last number in the nth row is going to be n squared plus n over 2. And from this big sum, subtract the numbers that you don't want. And the numbers you don't want is basically going to end up with the last number in the n minus 1 row or n minus 1st row, which is the n squared minus n divided by 2. So this would definitely be an easier way to approach it. By the way, this is not the only approach because you can also think of it this way. Hey, this is kind of like a Gauss sum. So what I can do is I can use a formula. Last number plus the first number divided by 2 and then times the number of terms. That will probably work too, but let's go ahead and use this approach first and then I'll get back to it and show you an alternative. Make sense? I'll get back to it, so don't worry about it right now. We have the two sums. I hope this makes sense. So in other words, this is what I'm trying to say. Let's say you're trying to find the sum of the numbers in the third row, right? This is the third row. So this is what I'm trying to say. Find all the sum, like sum of all these numbers, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and from that sum, su uh, subtract 1, 2, 3, that'll give you 4, 5, 6. Make sense? That's what I'm trying to do, and this is what that equation is for. Okay, great. So let's get back to this and see if we can resolve this. So how do you find the sum of these numbers? So again, we're going to go back to our formula. If you had a sum like this, it will be k times k plus 1 divided by 2. So you can basically take k to be this, and then that. Of course, there's going to be two k values, or you can call it m if you want. No big deal. So let's go ahead and use k or this one for k first. So it's going to look like this. This is my k. So it's going to, I'm going to take k. That's my k. Multiply by k plus 1 and divide by 2. And minus this one, I'm going to use that different k value this time. This is going to be my new k. My new k is going to be this k times k plus 1 divide by 2. We have a common denominator. It's all good. We even have a common denominator if you make denominators in the numerator. I hope that makes sense. And let's find out. This is going to give me n squared plus n. This is going to give me n squared plus n plus 2. And there's going to be a two over 2 over 2 over 4 minus n squared minus n times n squared minus n plus 2. All of that is divided by 4. So that should be the answer, and guess what? We're going to check this for n equals 3, and you can check it for pretty much any values. 
Okay, great. So let's go ahead and simplify this. Um, I could probably try a little bit of factoring here and there, or just distribute completely and get the answer that way. So let's go ahead and distribute it. n to the fourth plus n cubed plus 2n squared plus n cubed plus n squared plus 2n minus, I gotta be careful because I have to negate everything, n to the fourth minus plus n cubed plus minus minus 2n squared and then this is going to be minus but it's going to turn into a plus n cubed and then a plus n squared and a plus 2n get that uh, i hope i got it right because this is supposed to be a minus sign that's a plus sign okay n squared should be a minus sign i think because it was originally plus and that should be good let me check one more time i don't want to get it wrong plus n cubed minus n squared plus 2n okay i think that's good divide by 4. Let's simplify this mess. It's very messy, right? But n to the 4th cancels out. And then n squared might cancel out. Let's see. I have 2n squared with 2n squared and then n squared with n squared. I don't think any n cancels out. And we end up with n cubed plus another n cubed plus another n cubed plus another n cubed. That's going to give me 4n cubed. I have a 2n plus a 2n which is 4n divide by 4 and awesome this gives me n cubed plus n very very simple and there must be an explanation about it i don't know but you can just leave it like that now let's get back to the other approach we know that the smallest number in that row is this one and then the last number is that one how can i use that formula to get something like that okay so here's my second approach which you can call second method if you want and I'm going to use the Gauss sum formula. So in an arithmetic series, we basically average the first and last terms. So let's go ahead and add these up and divide by 2. That's going to give me their average. Okay. And then multiply it by the number of terms. How many terms are there in the nth row? You know this, right? Come on. There are n numbers. So all I have to do is multiply this by n, and it's super easy. You see, this is a lot easier than the other one, but of course, you need to know both. And here we are kind of getting, I think the n cancels out. We get 2n squared plus 2 divided by 4, and that's multiplied by n. And that's going to give me, by the way, I don't know if I made a mistake. I hope I didn't because this should give me the same answer, and looks like it's not giving me the same answer because if I simplify this I'm getting uh, let's see 2n cubed oops plus 2n divided by 4 and that should be n cubed plus n divided by 2 so I probably have an extra 2 somewhere or I forgot to simplify this somewhere and I got the wrong answer I'm not exactly sure but I'm gonna leave it at that and that's gonna be an exercise for you to find out which one is the correct version. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and oh, I, by the way, I told you I was gonna check my answer. If n is equal to three, I should be getting 27 plus three, which is equal to 30. So I think this is incorrect. You know why? Because we're supposed to divide by two. Therefore, the right answer should be this one. Anyways, this again brings us to the end and bye-bye.